I'm Lavina Archers. I'm a differentiation degree practitioner and also a variable teacher. So one of the things that I want to help you with is understanding this map over here on the left hand side. You can see these um, different squares, 16 different variable groupings. And it would be supportive if you already knew at least the fundamental foundations of your human design. So living your design is the first step and a foundation analysis before moving forward. So that's the requirement in going through this material with me. And the 16 different orientations of awareness, Ra would call it um, different ways or paths of enlightenment. They are about, about our cognitive differentiation. Now, cognitive is underneath the surface. Cognition, it refers to the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses, according to Wikipedia. So we're talking about your sensory capacity to be different. When we look at these different arrows, the variable groupings. So if you know your variable, go ahead and type that in to me if you would like to. I would love to know if you know your variable. Everybody familiar experimenting with your variable? Ah, there we go. All right, Nani got hers. It's P-R-L-D-R-R. -R. So in order to find it on the map, everybody find your variable on the map by going up to the top. P stands for personality. And Nani is RL, so RL and then DRR. -R. So Nani is down here. Okay. And Stacy is PRL, DRL. So Stacy's right here. And Joseph is PLL, DLR. Uh, okay. So you're right here. See how easy that is? So you can make sense of it. PLR and DRR. -R. Okay. Thank you for participating with me. So now we see that we have some people here on the mapping and we have two people that are in the blue. Okay, so the blue, what you can see at the bottom, if you look at this, the blues all have the same bottom two arrows. So now not only do you see where you're at in the mapping, but also who in the mapping of these 16 different orientations of awareness are in the same grouping as far as the life path that you've been dropped into, because that's what these bottom two arrows are about. So you can see observer and focused combination. Whereas if you were in the yellow squares, we have the observer and peripheral com com combination. There we go. And the orange is focused and observed as a combination. And the green is the observed and peripheral as a combination. So basically, it's super easy to find out what your variable stands for by just finding what the letters are from that uh, link that I gave you earlier and then finding yourself on this map. And then whoever is there with you, okay, whoever is there with you literally in that square, let's say you're a quad right over here. That is somebody that has a lot in common with you, my friend. It's like if you were to subdivide human beings, into four different types. We know the aura frequencies, right? But then underneath the surface, we have these 16 different ways, groupings of humans, how they are cognitively similar, not exactly the same, because there's still a lot going on under the surface, but this subdivides us into our orientations of awakening. So this is why, why it's so fun to do this and um, learn about this because it's like learning about your type. It's the next level of type, the orientation of awakeness. So when we look at your variable, one of the things that you want to know about this variable mapping is why, in fact, it might be so hard for some of us to follow our strategy and honor our unique authority. And that is everybody who is down here. Okay, anybody who is down here, the reason I'm highlighting this part of the graph is because if you look over here, everybody who's got a passive brain body system, this is your brain and body, okay? Your passive brain body system. When you have a passive brain body system, 
you have been homogenized from birth for seven years by how you took in life and how you took in food really dramatically. Hi, I'm right there with you. You're in good company. Here I am having a lot of challenges with the brain body system coming online. So this is where Ra would make an exception to his rule of, you know, experiment with strategy and authority for at least a year. I ask that people, if they're studying human design, at least try to dedicate for at least six months and ideally sleep alone for a year. But I don't hold you to, you know, strict rules. I wouldn't be able to tell if you were lying to me or not anyway. But with regards to coming into this, those of you down here with the passive brain body system, it's really important that you get in on this as soon as it is correct for you. Now, I personally came into this maybe a little bit too soon. I was very, very um, gung-ho about human design and I found, about, found out about it in early September of 2012, 2012. Got my first reading, got a couple of readings actually. Three different people told me about my design before I went to an actual analyst and she gave me some of the deeper layers, the first um, transformation. And all she gave me was one sentence. And from that one sentence, I extrapolated out and overzealously went all in on what I thought I was doing correctly, when in fact it was a horrendous mistake and I did damage to my body. So it's not about getting into this and going from your mind and thinking that you have to follow this in order for you to wake up. I know that's been something that's been really important to me throughout my entire life is this interest in awareness and awakening and enlightenment. And so for me, thinking I've found the gold mine for, you know, uh, moksha, enlightenment, and believing without experimenting, without following my body, my decision-making strategy, because I, I could not at the beginning I was helpless in that locked inness, my strategic mind trying to make sense of human design and not being able to be guided correctly. In the beginning, I was incredibly poor. I'm called, I'm talking dirt poor when I first um, came into this because I took it seriously. I quit and I didn't work. I followed, I tried to follow my strategy and authority to the letter for a while, just scraping along until things changed. So when it comes to your brain body system, those of you who are passive here, one of the most important things to know is that you're very sensitive. Okay. You're very sensitive. When we look at all of these arrows, particularly from the upper left, the first transformation, it's about your conditions and circumstances for taking in food, not just food, People are food. Information is food. Life is food. So when we take in life, if we are getting overstimulated from these bottom arrows, they're very easily overstimulated. What can happen is there's an overwhelm and there's a shutting down of the cognitive potential. Okay, so this is why it's so important for you to enter into this correctly. For those of you who are up here, the quad lefts, very important that you follow your strategy and authority, just like the quad right. Very important that you follow your strategy and authority into this. And especially those of you who are a passive brain body system. And it's challenging. I know from experience, it can be very, very challenging. It's a long uphill battle at times to let go of what your mind thinks is right, wrong, good, bad, should and shouldn't, good food, bad food, healthy food, all of these things that we have as homogenized concepts that have been impressed upon us from childhood, you know, eat all your vegetables. When some people are really not designed necessarily to thrive on just vegetables, you know, so it's really, really important at this moment that you recognize I am not the authority on you. You are going to take whatever knowledge you learn from human design and experiment with it for yourself so that you don't make my mistake. 
Do not give your authority over to Ra, to me, to anybody when it comes to this information. I'm simply sharing information. I am a certified differentiation degree practitioner. I am a variable teacher. I'm a holistic analyst, but I do not have any degrees outside of that realm. So this is, again, all up to you and your authority. As far as the tools for transformation, variable, what it can do for you is that it will mitigate the conditioning, the challenges, so that you can have your body enhanced with your mind and your spirit combined into this unified experience of life, whatever it happens to be for you. Because what happens is you, if you're not operating in alignment, dysfunction in the form is really bad. It's bad for business. It's bad for relationships. It's bad for your awakening. It's just bad. It's bad news. It's seriously, seriously challenging to try and follow your strategy and authority when you've got a brain body system that is misaligned. And so when we are not operating in alignment, we are not making decisions from our decision-making strategy, what happens is it's catastrophic because everything, there's this cascading effect, everything in the body not being able to um, orient correctly and then you can't see and then you can't think in the way that you're designed to see and think. And so what happens is it's catastrophic to your well-being, your longevity, the chemistry of your body, therefore the happiness, the efficiency of your work, the effectiveness of your brain body system, and therefore your mind, your perspective gets skewed, your motivation is off track, and your bottom line suffers when you are not operating in alignment. So again, for those of you who are right brain body system, this is really important to grasp that if you've been having trouble and you're not thinking clearly, your cognitive differentiation has suffered because the body is not aligned to its, my mind wants to say vehicular capacity. And I know that's really odd uh, way of languaging it when you're not familiar with the way that Ra talks about human design and the body. The body is the life. The body is the vehicle. The vehicle that we as passenger witness consciousness ride around on. And when you are not operating in alignment, you are slowly or quickly, depending on your design, working yourself into an early death if you're not aligned, if you're not on path, if you're not on purpose. The primary reason though you would wanna do this is not just a healthy bottom line or a highly functioning brain body system or longevity and all that. It really is about discovering the enhancement of your differentiated potential, your uniqueness. And the uniqueness that we talk about when we come to these arrows is coming from the tone, tonal cognition, tone, which is represented right here. Okay, tone is under the color, which is under the line, which informs how the gate operates. Okay, so the gate, then line, underneath the surface, the color, underneath the color, the tone, and underneath the tone, the base. The base is the entry frequency of the neutrino into the crystal of consciousness. The tonal architecture is what is inside, inherently unique to each of you. Each crystal is utterly unique. Your personality construct is completely, utterly new. And the only thing that is unique to you, life after life after life, 64,000 somewhat lives, incarnations that you have lived, each of us, approximately, according to Ra. Every single life that you've lived, you've always incarnated on the conscious personality, same base. Okay, same entry frequency, but inside in the tonal architecture of the crystal of consciousness, that is where we find our uniqueness. And this is where the arrows come from. Okay. So when we go to enhancing our cognition, I'm not talking about fluffy, frilly, you know, something that you can't grasp. These are actual real life sensory capacities. And when you have your real life sensory capacity online, all of a sudden what happens is you have something unique to offer to others because you are connected in with the source of what is inherently true and unique about you. And what can happen then is that we get an alignment of our purpose because when your tonal frequency is aligned, what happens is the magnetic monopole can hold your body and your mind together. 
in the illusion of this being separate from the totality, this life experience that we live. And the alignment of purpose feels freeing, it feels like freedom, it feels like joy, it feels like wonderment, it feels like awe, it feels like passion and abundance and romance, it feels like mm, fulfillment. And the fulfillment inside is going to feel unique to each of you, different for each of you, but the spirit is the same. The spirit of the essence of the awakening of the projector, success, sweet success. The spirit of the essence of the awakening of the generator, satisfaction. The spirit of the essence of the awakening of the manifester is peace. And the spirit of the success of the awakening of the reflector is surprise. Now, all of those words, they speak to the nature of your spirit, flowering, blossoming, blooming from within. And when you align to that higher sense of knowing and purpose, life isn't necessarily easy, my friends. It just feels different. I'm a feeling cognition. So you might feel in my voice when I speak with the passion and the aliveness that lives inside of me, breathes the essence of my spirit out into the world. And I want that for each of you. My whole desire is to contribute the purpose of what human design can offer you, and that is unique cognition, seeing. The whole game is about seeing, 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 especially for us as uh, projectors. So when you are aligned with your path and purpose, now your life is perfectly financed. You have profit that is conducive to you achieving the success that you were born for, the satisfaction that you were born for, the peace that you are here to establish in the world, or the surprise and the delight of mm, open to the awe and wonderment of what life is like. So that's why to learn this, as far as my personal take on things. Now, Ra has lots of materials out there. I'm going to reference those when, uh, if you take the course with me, there's a lot of uh, free materials that are organized into some of the course uh, areas so that you can also go and watch that. But at the end, I'll share with you if, if right now is not a right time for you to join this group, um, if it's too much money for you, which I absolutely understand, there's a lot of resources I'm going to link to you, give to you after this, okay, so that you are mm, supported at least in beginning your experiment. So there's videos on Jovian Archive, jovianarchive.com, if you'd like to go and listen from the horse's mouth, so to speak, the messenger's mouth, the original messenger. <sighs> okay, so here is my body graph, my advanced Maya mechanics imaging software. Okay, so you go to Jovian Archive, look under software, download the software. I, at Last I checked, it was a while ago. I don't know if it's still the case, but when you download the software, you should be able to have it fully unlocked and maybe even be able to run one of these charts for yourself. Do let me know if that's not the, still the case, but last I checked, that was how it was. And what you're looking at is a body graph that now shows not just a gate and a line, but down below the surface, we have color and we have tone, the tonal architecture. And in the five, the square is the base. Our primary concern today is to talk about the tonal architecture here. Okay, that's the first step here. And then I'll go a little bit over here just to talk about not the numbers, the values within, but the fact that they are either right or left. Okay, right brain body system or left brain body system, that's a totally different thing than if we were to have two rights or two lefts or facing in the opposite direction. Okay, so that's where I want to begin you with, with just some um, material that should hopefully support you in your process. It is all about, again, awareness. The body, the brain body system, if you have a left facing arrow, that first one that we were just talking about over on the left-hand side. Let me just go back just to make sure if you're paying attention to take a look. This is where we're at, okay? So on your mapping, it's the top left arrow that is either pointed right or left. Again, if it's pointed right like mine, we have our work cut out for us. 
If it's right like mine, you are passive, your brain body system. If it's left, you are active with your brain body system. Some people get confused and think it's just the brain. It's not. It is your brain and it is your body's way of processing life. Okay, it's how you process life. Okay, so the left brain body system, if this is your case, you have a genetic need for more energy, more fuel. You must not skip meals unless the body is telling you to. For example, you get sick. Yeah, everybody gets sick once in a while. Okay, so you have a fever and you're not hungry. That is absolutely okay. You know, listen to the body. The body knows best. But if you are attempting to do intermittent fasting or long periods of fasting, what you're doing is damage to your cognition. So because you have a higher brain capacity, energy consumption, activity, this busy brain body system, what happens is you burn off a lot more fuel, energy. And water, most of us, we are mostly water, right? So the water retention is actually quite low because you're using it up a lot. Because your brain is active, it's focused as far as what it's doing. It's linking together things. It's putting things in a box. It's labeling. It's organizing. It's categorizing. Okay? It's very, very active. This is the more, you could say, ancient, the older model. Not that it's bad, just that it is different. And it's all about survival. It is designed to be discriminative and it's looking for stimulation. The stimulation that is either concentrated or periodic. Concentrated in the sense that it's looking for the smell of things, the taste of things, the sight of things outside, looking at things, stimulation. Okay, so your left brain body system being active, here's a tip. If you are feeling fatigued in your brain, you can go and mm, either snack or some hot liquid, okay? Whatever hot food you like to drink, or yeah, I could say I call food liquids food because I'm a cold thirst person. That is something that can help wake your brain up, okay? Stimulate the parts of the brain that are so active, fuel it with that uh, heat, that energy, liquids or uh, snacks. Okay. So no, no skipping meals for you left brains. Now, of course, run that through your own authority, please. I'm not the boss of you. Now, if we move over to the right hand side, the passive brain body system, this is, hi, that's me. Passive is about lower energy consumption. And what happens here is that it's absolutely, utterly okay to skip meals. You might be one of those people you recognize, oh, you really don't need breakfast. You know, sometimes I don't eat until one o'clock in the afternoon and my brain is okay. Once in a while I forget and my brain is not okay because I've been teaching for three or four hours or what have you. But remember to pay attention to the body. It is okay to not eat as much. We eat like little birds comparatively. Now, if you're not eating like a little bird, that's a signpost. If you're stuffing your face with lots of food, the moment the passive brain body system attempts to use food, let's say to um, soothe an emotional state, now we have homogenization. Let's say you were growing up um, in a family like mine, where the 4037 was there and it was all about bonding over food. I remember my dad ripping the door off of my bedroom because he wanted me to come out to eat dinner when I wasn't hungry. He was very upset with me that I wouldn't come and uh, join the dinner, you know, with everybody, eat with everybody. If you are forced to eat three meals a day because that's what your family does, high homogenization for the passive, passive brain body system. Okay. The passive brain body system is here to relax in its brain and in its body. It has a high water retention. Okay. So usually, hmm. My mind wants to say packing on a few more pounds. That could be one of the changes that happens as you decondition over time is that your, your body becomes a little bit softer, especially if you've been trying to be hard bodied, you know, and get rid of that extra weight. This is one of the things that is true for the right brain body system is high water retention. It's not about the brain being active or focused. 
It's about the passive itness of being. Itness, as in presence, as in experience, as in being available to take everything in. Now what happens here, this is about not high concentrated stimulation, but this is about stimulation that is, we are more sensitive to stimulation, you could put it that way. It's more about us going inward into our inner vision or into our feeling state or into our touch state, what is touching us from within, which is cyclical, very sensitive, and so easy to overstimulate. This makes a lot of sense to me when I came across this, as far as the challenges in homogenized society that I had in dealing with the world. So the passive brain body system is a future oriented brain. Okay. Future oriented as in the new model, the new model as in different, not better, just different. Doesn't need a lot of fuel. Don't overstuff yourself. Okay. Right brain body system being cooler than the seven centered, you know, hot model, the older model, we could say, cooler as in sensitive, open, maybe potentially available to absorb. So that brain body system, you can see we have two completely different models. Now, when we combine that with a mind that is different, you get some challenges, some issues, you could say, with the dynamics between having a right brain and a left mind, as you can see with mine. Or maybe you have a left brain and a right mind. That's very different compared to a left brain and a left mind versus a right brain and a right mind. So those are the four combinations. And we just went over the brain body system here. We're going over to skip over to the mind. Now the mind can either be strategic, which is left. You can see this arrow pointing left here and the left ideally is about being liberated from choice. The goal of your strategic mind, mine too, is to be liberated from choice in order to see the way that we're here to discriminate is by focusing. The conscious personality constructs strategizing with things. It remembers specific things. It doesn't store additional information. That's not necessary. We are designed to pull from our own memory and it always, the strategic mind always has an agenda, a strategy, a goal in mind. This is for whom we have goal, you know, pro processes, programs, goal oriented strategies. I can sell you on strategies like nobody's business in human design. I can communicate outer authority themes for survival that the other quadrants in the body graph are going to need. So to learn, it's about trusting your focus, reviewing what you've missed, testing yourself, taking notes. Okay. This is the way that the left mind learns your left mind, learning what is correct for you. Now, when it comes to strategies in order to see, remember, this is all about your unique differentiated mm, construct, the way that you're either attuned to security or attuned to uncertainty or attuned to action. This is all about survival when it comes to seeing, 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 seeing is one of the basic benefits, seeing clearly, it's a basic benefit of being in alignment. All of us are designed to see absolutely, utterly, uniquely. There are so many different ways human beings are programmed, not only to see, witness, perceive, but also have that very perception fuel the way that we are designed to be cognitively different and motivated to action. So right here is where we find motivation. It's either going to be strategic or not. For those of you who are strategic is very much about, um, my mind wants to say recognition. Not all of us have that, you know, I'm a projector. So recognition is my shtick, my uh, strength there. 
but it also could be response. All motivations are in response to life. Okay. Remember, we're talking about your personality construct, the way that your mind is designed to think, to perceive, to be aware of what's it's processing, what's going on in its, uh, perception, taking in from the outside world, digestion, absorption, and then putting it back out into the world. So each of you has a very specific way that you are designed to function optimally. This seeing this motivational frequency doesn't work if your brain's online, not online. If your brain isn't online, this won't work. You're automatically distracted and transferred when it comes to mm, being able to see. And so here's one of the reasons why hmm, someone on Twitter said, you know, I don't agree with human design to me this morning. There's this law of one stuff. My husband studied the law of one. So I know what he's talking about. And you know, there's this free will, free choice. And you know, the longer that I study human design, the longer that anyone would study human design, the more you recognize the patterns, the more you see that we are absolutely utterly choiceless and choicelessness is our grace. To be in alignment is freeing because now path and purpose are lived, breathed through you. It's not about trying to make a choice. I, my mind is great for strategizing for other people, but if I try to use that strategy, those very same strategies mentally for myself, good luck. Okay. It always ends in bitterness or some kind of issue. If I'm attempting to use my mind to make decisions, same for all of us, all of us are conditioned to be strategic because that was the seven centered model for 90,000 years, 90,000 years, that brain body system was all left. Okay. This orientation, these 16 different orientations, this is a new birthing of a new kind of vehicle, new kind of human, the nine centered vehicle through which we are all going through a deep, profound mutation, a genetic shift. And our minds haven't caught up yet with the brain body system. Okay. So it's really, really important to grasp that this is not about trying to superimpose new language, new experience onto you, but having you start from the very beginning to align to your correctness of awareness, the body, okay. The digestion and awareness and the perspective environment and perspective being part of these four transformative gifts that we're all designed to partake in. So it's all about your mind being liberated from choice. If you are left, if you are strategic, if your mind is focused in that direction. Now the receptivity of those of you who have a right facing mind, the arrow, this is about you processing and expressing information that you don't know that you know. And I would like to remove the word process there actually, because this is about not processing while you're taking in. Okay. It's not about processing while you're taking in. Let's see. Presenter view. I forgot to get my notes. So all of that was off the cuff. <laughs> Oops. I did mean to add in some notes today, but oh, well, I'm sure I'll do it again sometime. Power to repeat, you know? Okay. So. The right mind is about beingness and you express information that you don't know how, you know, where you got it, you know, what it's going to come out. Like when you do, it just comes out and your primary health system, brain, body system operating in alignment supports the correct storage of what's been taken in. When you're receptive, you're taking it all in. You're like a big open sponge, whether or not you have a defined head Ashna, you're like a sponge here. Okay. When you're receptive in being the intelligence that you display reflects your milieu, as Rob would say, the others in your life who are drawing from your well, you're like this deep, think of gate 48 storage, you know, well of information that you've taken in, not just what you, you know, have witnessed 
from the conscious, you know, perceptual reality, smell, taste, touch, seeing, but also down below the inner availability to be receptive to electromagnetics and frequencies and sounds and memories, things that people carry around in their aura, the feeling, the touch of them, your inner vision. It's so much about this meditative quality of what you're taking in from others over time. So notice what others pull from you. Those are your invitation responding or initiating themes. What do they continually ask of you? When you are surrendered to being used correctly by those others who dip into your well, it is something that feels good to have drawn from you. It's like, ah, I didn't know that that was there. You know, so to learn, it's just about paying attention. Be present, okay? Pay attention, no multitasking. Whereas the left strategic, remember I asked you to experiment with taking notes. The right here, just be beingness, itness, be present, be available to witness, to watch. Because when you're receptive, you're storing data without processing. The left processes, strategizes while it's taking in. You're not designed to do that. So it's about the experiential sensory phenomena that can be deeply attuned to the meditative quality, to the feeling, to the touch, beyond physical touch, talking energetic auric touch, you know, acceptance, uh, discernment, and the inner knowing, this quality of itness, beingness. So it's not about your mind trying to figure out whether or not something is of value as you're taking it in. So you know that thing, if you're right here, you might uh, laugh and giggle at this. You know that thing, if you ever listen to a podcast or watch some educational piece, maybe even me, you listen to me and you walk away and you go, what the heck did I just learn? That's the right, okay? Because the right is not designed to try and recall it itself. It's designed for other people to come and recall. It's not about your mind interfering with what you're taking in. You're just so sensitive. Okay, this is, we're moving evolutionarily towards rave. Everybody know what the rave word means? Rave being the nine centered, fully nine centered human being, the 2027 model. After 2027, some of us will be rave as far as the children that will be born. And these raves, the right is what is leaning deeply cognitively towards rave. Okay, so you are a perfect person to have a conversation with. It's not about mulling things over, trying to strategize. It's about operating without reason, without trying to find the point in it all. More reflective, you could say, more open potentially way more vulnerable with this right mind in your receptivity. Okay, so that's your right and left mind and motivation system. I'm gonna just sip of water here. I do not know how quickly I will wrap things up, but I will leave some space at the end for questions. I see we have about 18 of you in here with me. If you have questions, you're welcome to type them into the Q&A box. And I look forward to checking in with that after I'm done with the lecture piece. Okay, so this is an older image from Jovian Archive. I put their new logo on here. What you can see is that this is actually Ra's chart. And we're talking about the four radical human transformations in this course as far as this is an experiential course it's not a certifying course as a variable teacher i'm one of 25 people in the world that can guide you through this kind of group interaction and it is healthier to go into the depth of this experience in a group now for me as a projector who is very sensitive not healthy for me to do it physically in aura so i don't do in aura dynamics and interactions at the moment. But when you come to our group, what I've done is I've 
spread out these four transformations into eight segments. And rather than just skimming the surface, which is what Rob would do, weekend course, 16 people, you know, lecture in the morning, chart work in the afternoon, way too much for this um, delicate projector body that likes to yeah, have stamina um, and focus for short periods of time. So what I prefer doing is taking small groups of people, four to six people maximum, through the four radical transformations and giving you information one week and then coming back the next week to give you more information and to check in and see how your experiment is going. Because I was one of those people who actually did damage to my physical form, trying to, attempting to follow my dietary regimen without guidance, I'm highly sensitive and attuned to where that might be a potential pitfall for each of my clients and students. And I do not want that to happen to anyone under my watch. So one of the things that I have done, um, this would be my ninth group, full four transformations group, since I became a variable teacher. What I have done is spread out these four transformations into 10 sessions. Today is the first session and there is an intermittent session between primary health system, the stuff on the left, and the uh, rave psychology, which is the stuff on the right. And I do that to talk about your biggest signpost of conditioning, as far as your biggest conditioning factor, above and beyond, you know, getting transferred to lear learning about, you know, thinking that you have to make decisions from um, an, an open center, you know, the not self strategies, but above and beyond that, we have something that's called a primary weak point. And that is derived from looking at your dream rave, which is a different chart from your daytime waking aura. So that's the middle section. Okay. In between, I have one space, one class where we just kind of explore the surface knowledge of dream rave, just introducing you to the concept. I will do um, a type change and weak point, first weak point, not all of them. There's so many different weak points, but the, the primary, like really life altering one that you need to know about if you have a primary weak point. And so that's going to be our, you could say, an intermission between diving into primary health system and race psychology. So that's the way I like to work so that we can talk about your digestion, which can either be, like we mentioned, active or passive, and more specifically, unique to the nuances, not only that's going on here in your color and tone, the conditions and circumstances, the cognitive potential, but also how that relates to your unconscious magic square. Magic square being, I'll show you real quick here, Okay, this is the just now chart. If this was whoever just was born as I started this class, all of this magic square stuff, this all stands for different aspects of your body. Okay, brain body system, but then aspects of how the brain and body interface to create form and the dynamic of the interface between this and that and this and that, whatever it happens to be. Okay, so that's why it takes me so long. Not to mention, we're going to go into some of the thematics, I really love nodes, of the nodal environmental frequency because so much weight is put in on regular human design to study the incarnation cross. Yeah, what, you're, what you are up here, that is what you be. But not so much at the um, consumer level, the just learning for the experience and fun of it level. Not so much information is out there on your nodal path, a frequency where you walk and how you see. So that's one of the reason, another reason why we take some time here with the body, brain body system is to deeper understand what happens when you're not eating in alignment with your genetic requirements or your genetic requirements, your fuels for your authority process to be on. Are they present in your diet or not? Now, this is simply about meat and proteins and fats and carbs. This is not about, you know, organic or not, good food, bad food, what have you. 
Okay, it's just about your body's requirements, its genetic need for certain things, salt or sweet. Those are all seen within the body graph. What is it? Is it healthy for you for these things? How do you know? How can you tell? What are your signposts of things that are going off? If you're not eating correctly, if you're not in the right place, that's what you're going to discover when you take this uh, experience with me. Okay. And then the awareness on the personality construct side, whether you're strategic or receptive, another thing that we're going to take a look at are your motivational frequencies as far as your trajectory and your tonal cognition on the conscious personality side as well, which I just gave you an intro to the surface level of whether you are strategic or receptive. So that's digestion and your mental awareness. Okay, that's the internal. Go back here one more time. This is the internal, okay? Dependent variables. What are they dependent on? They are dependent on being in the right place and seeing correctly. And that's where we talk about nodes. So in the nodal positioning here, we are looking at either you being observed or being the observer, okay? Observed in the environment or being the observer. And there's also underneath the surface, we have tone and color again, that tells us more specifically the values within the environment that will be fruitful or supportive or helpful, empowering in this case, helpful for the differentiation of our body in its environment. I like to think of the nodes as kind of um, on the unconscious side, like the soup that we're swimming in, you know? Are we in salt water? Are we in fresh? Are we high up on the mountain? Are we down at sea level? You know, there's all these different kinds of places. What is the place like where we be? What nourishes the full capacity of our longevity, reduces the friction in the environment? Literally, this is only important once you are 30 and older. The rare exception for environment being important is if you're sick and you're under 30, you can experiment with that and see. So if you've got kids and they're very sick, check into their environment, see how you can support their form to have less resistance. Okay. On the conscious personality side, the nodes show us the windows of our viewpoint, how we see, are we designed to be focused or are we designed to be peripheral, taking it all in? focused is very, very specific. Hi, that's me. So narrowly focused on very, very specific things. So you can see all these different ways that a human being, all these different crosses, uh, cross, uh, the incarnation cross up here, this too, these nodes make a cross in your body graph. It's usually a narrower cross, not this, you know, sun earth cross, the crosses of life, the cross of life, you know, your conscious personality, sun, earth with your nodes, unconscious personality or unconscious design, sun, earth, and your nodes. So many different ways of reading this body graph. But right here on the surface, we're looking at, and even in my body graph, you know, the other Jovian Archive owned official resource has the arrows there just to help you make sure. Now, for the most part, every single one of you, uh, it's really, really important that we go and make sure you have precise birth time for this. Precise birth time, utterly key. If you don't have precise birth time, I have as part of the package time with me that I'll need you to book right away so that we can discern what time is correct for you. In Vedic astrology or Western astrology, they do rectification. Vedic is much better at it. Uh, chart rectification, if you don't know your time. So if you don't know it by days, definitely Vedic astrology. If you don't know your time by uh, minutes, that's something that I can help you with, okay? By minutes, maybe even up to an hour or so. I wouldn't really trust myself beyond that. But I'm okay with, you know, you having maybe um, some challenges. You're, you've been trying to digest life correctly and it's just not working for you. I know lots of people like this where they're right on the border of either being uh, a daytime feeder or a nighttime feeder. Did you know that we have actual vampires not eating blood, but as in night owls, night creatures? Okay. So 
it's important that we really get this right for you to experiment with. Otherwise, you're doing yourself a disservice, maybe damage even to your vehicle. So the correctness of awareness is fueled by you operating in alignment. And the cognitive potential of your attunement to this vehicle operating in alignment is going to be so much more refined and sensitive if you are using the right birth time and experimenting with this over time, which is another reason why I spread these out over 10 weeks, the series over 10 weeks. So today is the first step. You're doing great. We're almost there. With regards to the final piece that I want to give you before I wrap up and uh, see if there's any questions is some resources for you to go find your own study material on variable. So I'm just clicking on this link and this was uh, when I was working for Jovian um, in the back end. I'm, I'm not anymore. I just write for them now. When you're looking at Jovian Archives website under the 16 variable workshops of Ibiza, 2009. Well, I actually sat down with a group of each of these. And so I'm just going to put that into the chat if that is interesting to you to get your own variable. Now, again, make sure that your time is correct before you go and get that video. You can see it's 47. Money's a problem. Wait till it's on sale. That's what I did. I waited until all of them were on sale and then bought them all in a package along with my projector discount. Projectors do get a discount here. Just write office at jovianarchive.com with your ID. I'm not getting paid to say this. I just want you to have the right information because there are people out there who are making up things about these variables. Now, another thing that you can do if you want to learn this for yourself and for your clients. So first, the guided transformation with me my radical transformation clinics of which there isn't anything like it on this planet because I do it extended and I add in dream rave and I, I have it in very, very small groups. So it's process work. It's basically like analysis over time, just extended out over time, really good for people who have splits, who have emotional authority, who have mental definition as a mental projector, or, you know, even reflectors, people who need a lot of time to digest and process. Okay. That's what I'm good with. And this is not about you coming to me with any kind of uh, psychological diagnosis. I cannot help you if you have um, really challenging things going on in your life, as in, you know, you're really faced with deep, dark depression, or you're taking um, drugs that change your mood, mood stabilizers, you know, things that are of a challenging nature. If you're self-medicating, please don't come to my classes. I can't. I'm, so, I'm too sensitive for that. And I feel it's better for the group if I only maintain a higher level of awareness and not um, you, you need more support is all I'm saying. And that I'm not the one to give it to you if you are um, self-medicating or on um, psychoactive drugs. Now, if you want to learn this for yourself, in the analyst training, not everybody's analyst training, but for the most part, I'm pretty clear that raw wanted analysts to know this from the basic fundamental level. So you will get, if you're taking my analyst training, um, some information that goes deeper into this, but it's not the experiential experimental um, process work. That I'm offering. But if you want to study it on your own, you're not an analyst training, there's color consciousness. It's about personality color from the IHDS. There's these um, audios and a digital book package from the left and from the right, each of the variable combinations. And under Jovian Archive, the free resources are under media library, videos, and variable. So I'm just going to click these two. And if it's something that you're interested in, just offer that to you. Are you guys seeing the chat? I wonder if I don't have this set up correctly. <laughs> you might not even be seeing what I'm attempting to share. But if you are not seeing it, another place that you can find this is under topics. If you go into topics in our human design and life group and you go to radical transformations, rave psychology, I have lots of not only raw materials that are freely available on the internet, but also past trainings where I've gone into deeper layers and levels of different parts of the material. So this is where to start if you don't have the funds or if you're not ready quite yet, you just want to dip your toes in the water. Okay, so that's what I offer to my students as far as understanding 
radical transformations, the primary health system, rave psychology. It's a wonderful, fabulous area of knowledge. It's really the whole reason I went to IHDS because I wanted to learn this information. Found other people teaching human design, didn't know the difference, and wrote one of the primary uh, published authors and said, hey, I wanna learn this, do you teach this? And I got no reply. And then I found out she wasn't even certified. So it's one of the reasons why I went to Human Design America and then IHDS to learn this material. And it's really like the crowning jewel in human design as far as differentiation, coming to a unique cognitive awareness. So I wonder if um, now is a good time for you to share with me. We've been going at it for an hour. Those of you who have a left brain body system, okay, so everybody up here, now I get to tell you what your challenge is. Right now, you're probably fatigued if you haven't snacked. So I would take a break. I will be here for a while longer unless somebody, unless nobody has anything that they want to ask. Uh, you're welcome to also um, message office at humandesignlifecoaching.com if you have any questions, any follow-up. I'm not the hard salesperson here. I will never try to force anybody into this information before they're ready. But if you are ready and you have questions, I'm here to facilitate as much as I am aware of right now, the guidance of you and your form, if you have anything that you need to ask. 